very excited to have Akuncha Malik, who is a data scientist at Telstra Purple, a Microsoft AI MVP and international speaker. After studying financial maths in Ireland, she realized that she wants to work with people, not just the numbers. And with Purple, she's working with clients to help them solve problems, making more informed decisions with data. She's a firm believer in diversity and inclusion, like myself, and loves machine learning, and that it's becoming more accessible to everyone. She is also a director of Women Who Code in Melbourne, which is amazing. Congratulations. And I'm super excited to have you here with us today. And over to you, Akuncha. Perfect. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks, Val, for that fabulous introduction. Um, so yeah, we're here for the Adding Intelligence and Unlocking New Insights with AI and Machine Learning session. As Val said, my name is Akansha, and I'm a data scientist in Melbourne. So with that, let's jump straight in. Um, so our plan today is to go through what exactly is machine learning? How can we really make our IoT solutions smart in that sense? So what we're going to do is go through a one big example from an end-to-end -end perspective, just so you can get an idea of how a real IoT solution will work in this um, great new age. So there's animals kind of everywhere at this stage, <laughs> this day and age. Uh, some of them are really, really cute, but some are super, super annoying, like the possums outside my window every night at 1 a.m. that likes to screech every single time. And similarly, in America, there are the raccoons and the raccoons like going through people's trash and making a mess in general and are just super loud, which nobody really likes in the middle of the night. I can attest to that. Um, so with that in mind, we've got Mel who is sick and tired of these raccoons going through her trash and she's decided she's going to set up a trash defense system where her plan essentially is she's going to set up a camera which will identify whether or not there's a raccoon in her trash or in her backyard. And if there is, it'll set off a light, which will hopefully start the raccoon into walking away before it makes a really big mess. That's a great idea that she's got. So she goes about and sets out to start bringing up her products and stuff that she's gonna need to create this. So she gets a Raspberry Pi as the computer to run all the calculations on, a camera, a lamp, and of course, a Microsoft Azure subscription. So this is great. She's now kind of got a plan. Now the problem itself is the fact that her plan involves the camera looking at an image essentially and needing to figure out whether or not there's a raccoon in it which traditionally seems like a really really hard problem to solve but not with machine learning it's quite straightforward with that so what exactly is machine learning in that sense in its kind of barest definition machine learning essentially is the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed and let's talk about it in kind of traditional programming sense so back in the days what you'd usually kind of have in here would be an algorithm and some data you give it to your computer, and the computer basically figures out what the answer should be at the end of the day. In machine learning, this is essentially switched around, where your answers and the data are what you give the computer, and that will tell you what the best way to learn and what the best algorithm will be. So in machine learning, that algorithm essentially is then just called a model. So for our example, what we want to be able to see happening is for our model that's now been trained to identify raccoons and images, we use that model, get new data, which is gonna be all the um, images coming in from our camera to predict whether or not there's a raccoon in there at the end of the day. Hopefully we'll be able to stop them from making such a mess in our backyard. So that's what our aim is. So with that, let's have a quick look at how we would go about setting up this specific function, this model that we wanna have. So what we want to see is an image in which there's a very peaceful looking raccoon. And we want the model to tell me that, yep, there is a raccoon in that photo. And that's basically a classification model. So we're classifying yes or no, whether there's a raccoon in here. How do we go about making this function work? How do we make this actually happen? There's kind of two main things that you need in this world of machine learning. So you need data. So you need a lot of images of raccoons in different ways and formats. So them, some of them with blonde hair looking really, really angry and some just very happy. But a machine learning model basically needs to see all different variations of it to be able to get trained up on it. So this is the training environment and the way it trains it is goes through and learns and looks at different images and it's trained up using different machines. So you need two environments, you need data and you need your machines to be able to make a model, which will hopefully then tell you that, hey, there's a raccoon in this image. But with it being 2021 and this new decade of unprecedented times, you never know what if it's not just raccoons that are causing mayhem in the backyard at the end of the year. What if maybe next year, unicorns are also actually awful animals, which I really hope is not the turn we take. 
but that might be the case and they might be the ones that you need to identify in your model too. All that really requires is just a retraining of your model. All you do is just add images of unicorns into your training data set and just retrain it, which now the model can identify raccoons and unicorns at this stage. So that's great. We now know how we're gonna build this model, the basic needs that it has and how do we actually get it to work? Where are we gonna do it? How does this actually work? This is great in theory, but where are we gonna go about doing this? So this is where the Azure platform is actually super, super cool because it kind of caters to almost every single skill level. You might be here having zero idea of how you would make a machine learning model, that's completely fine. Or you might be a data scientist who's created hundreds of them in your past. It caters to both of those needs. So they have things like the domain specific pre-trained models. What these are, are basically out of the box, ready to go models um, that you just connect up through your APIs and they have about 40 of them. So these are run, managed and kind of updated and trained and everything by Microsoft themselves. And they cater to things like vision, speech, language and search. Essentially, you can connect this up into your application and make any application be able to like look at images, identify them, chat through speech bots and uh, chat bots, as well as being able to understand multiple different languages. There's a lot more you can do kind of out of the box, ready to go. But if you are a data scientist and you need a lot more custom and bespoke solutions, don't worry, all your favorite tools are here as well, ready to be used in really um, collaborative scenarios such as Azure Machine Learning Studio, which allows for people to in multiple different teams to be able to access the same data. So all those products are still available to you. And as well, always with cloud, you've got really powerful infrastructure backing you up, such as CPUs and GPUs that can be scaled to whatever level you need them to be. And they're always gonna be fast and reliable. So now that we know how and where we can host this, how do we actually go about it? What are the different ways? So I'll go through a few different examples of how you can create your model in Azure. So one of them is the computer vision. So this is one of those pre-trained models. You basically put an image in and it tells you what's in that image. It's amazing. It's just no work at all that you need to do here at all. Uh, so that, for example, in that photo, you can see there's a lot of different descriptions that the API returns. Things like there's a ground in this photo, there's an animal and so on and so forth. But when you kind of go back and take a step back and you think about our problem, which is just raccoons in our backyard, I don't need my camera ident or my machine learning model identifying there's grass and there's a bin and all these other things that might be in my backyard. I just wanna know, is there or is there not a raccoon? So a custom vision uh, might be a better approach in our scenario where basically either their computer vision, uh, their custom vision API service is what I would use, put up all my data in here, which would be just all the images of raccoons and the unicorns I can find, train it on that. And it's a very uh, guided um, service altogether in terms of it guides you through please put your data in, this is what you wanna do. You can label it here and everything. And it shows you how to deploy and actually um, extract them at the end of it as well. But then again, you may be a data scientist and have a really, really deep need to actually be able to control every part of it. And you might need to make it really custom. So Azure Machine Learning Studio also offers that where you can control end to end your whole pipeline. You can manage everything through ML ops where you can control everything that's happening. And that flexibility then is completely within your reach of what control goes where. So all the different options are available to you and all of them will actually invariably end up to this stage where you've now got a model that can identify a raccoon in an image. Uh, it's kind of what you want. It's like, yep, there's my image and there's a raccoon in it. So now that we've got that, we've got our model sorted, we need to make the model go to work, right? We need our backyard to be safe away from these raccoons that are constantly coming in and out. So let's put it to work. So let's just, before we put it to work, just let's remind ourselves of our scenario. What is our IoT solution here? So we've got data coming in, which is gonna be our, from our camera, which is gonna send images to our model, which will analyze these and say whether or not predict if there is or isn't a raccoon in this image. And then there should be a triggering an action, which is gonna be from our alarm, which is our light in the scenario to scare away our raccoon. So there's two main options around this that I'll go through in terms of how you can set this up in your backyard. And you can do it in the cloud completely. So we've got IoT and ML in the cloud. We've got our edge device, which will be our Raspberry Pi. So what's gonna happen is it'll take a camera, every image from your camera will get sent up to the cloud. In the cloud, it'll run it through your model. The model will say, yep, hey, there's a raccoon in this image, which will send a trigger back to your device saying, hey, you should turn the light on, get rid of our raccoon. But as you can see, it's a very long drawn out process, especially when there's images coming in every single second from this camera stream. 
So what you really would need is a really reliable internet um, connection. And even then it might take quite a long time for this to come back just because there's so many different bits that by the time you turn the light on, the raccoons already made a mess of your backyard. So we need something that's a little bit more faster around this whole scenario. So what you could do is actually do all of these calculations and prediction bits on edge. So what'll happen is your uh, Raspberry Pi will be able to have your deployed model on there and the stream from your ca um, camera will just send images to the model, which sits on your device. It gets a prediction there and it turns the light on or off depending on whether there's a raccoon there. So here, there was absolutely no need for it to go up to the cloud. You can still connect it up. You don't even need a running Wi-Fi uh, signal at all. Every few days, you can connect it up Wi-Fi, send all the data up to the thing, and you can actually monitor the usage. Hey, how many times over the last week has there been raccoons that I've deterred from destroying my backyard? So all those monitoring devices can uh, actions can still be taken part of. Uh, it's just the fact that the latency basically disappears, that there's just no uh, lag from sensing that there's a raccoon to actually having an action take place. So as I mentioned, there are pros and cons to both in the cloud and on the edge. In the cloud, you've got remote monitoring. Uh, you'll be able to actually connect up multiple different IoT devices to be able to compare them as you go. And as always, infinite compute and storage to be able to train these machine learning models, and everything else you've got associated to that data. But then with the edge, that low, la low latency comes into play where it's really, really quick. All the pre-processing happens with all your data on premise. It doesn't really leave it. You can leave it completely offline. And with that comes the power of data protection. You can keep your data private, completely local, if you don't want it going up to the cloud. So for us in our backyard, what is the most optimal way of solving this problem? What we might look at is a mixture of both of those scenarios. We'll build, test, and manage all of our um, AI and materials up in the cloud. So basically, that's going to be training everything up. Everything sits there. We've got all the power of um, Azure. And we'll run the model locally on our uh, Raspberry Pi in our backyard, where there's no time lag involved at all. It can be completely non-Wi-Fi. So now that I've mentioned IoT Edge, which sounds really, really cool in terms of, hey, it's just going to sit in my backyard, and it'll do everything for me without an internet connection. How is that all going to work? So let's have a quick look at how exactly things will work on the Edge. So basically, um, you can deploy your cloud workloads right into the IoT device. Uh, it can be Linux or Windows. The runtime is free and open sourced. Um, you'll have modules which contain different bits of it. They're Docker compatible. And as well as that, you can actually interact with it through your cloud uh, interface altogether, and actually manage it locally as, or remotely as well. So let's take a deeper dive into exactly how this will work on Edge. So you'll have three modules, which will be your camera, AI, and your alarm module. So all these will talk to different parts of your solution. So camera will talk to, obviously, the images coming in. AI will sort through those images, and the alarm will be the thing that triggers your light. All of these will sit in your container registry in Azure, just stores them in one place. Everything can talk to your de deployment manifest. And um, so bear with me, this is kind of the most complicated part of it. So the deployment manifest essentially just manages what these modules go to, where do they sit, and how they all communicate to each other. Um, all of this then just sits in your IoT hub, which can deploy everything into your local devices um, in your backyard in our Raspberry Pis. So if we zoom in to our Raspberry Pi here, what's going to be happening in there is on the Azure IoT Edge runtime, there's two modules that come by default, uh, the uh, Edge Agent and the Edge Hub. Edge Agent basically manages all the deployments and stuff, makes sure everything's running. The Edge Hub is what talks to the different modules individually in communication. So we'll have a camera module, which will take the images from our camera, send them to the AI. AI will say, hey, is there or is there not a raccoon in this image? Send that prediction down to the Edge Hub. Alarm module will read that prediction, which might say, yep, there's a raccoon, get rid of it, which turns the light on. And if the light does go on, it'll actually send a response back saying, hey, I've turned the light on, that was an incident, which those incidents can actually be then sent up to the Azure IoT Hub to be monitored for later use. So with that, We've now created an end-to-end -end solution of getting rid of these nasty raccoons to stop messing up our backyard and creating really big messes out there um, so that Mel doesn't have to wake up to it in the middle of the night and then clean it up tomorrow. And so I hope that kind of made sense and it gives you a really good idea of how do we implement intelligence into our IoT scenarios. So loads of different options and uh, variations you can put into this. Be really interested to see what you actually get around to doing. So with that, there are a lot of the resources here that you can go out to figure out 
how you might make your own solution work with some intelligence. And I think all of these will be shared on in the chat and the slide at the same time. And also learning paths. So there is a learning path available for this module, which you can go along and actually code and create your own intelligence edge with Azure IoT Edge solutions. I really hope you kind of go into it. It's actually really cool the way they've actually labeled it out. It's really interactive. Let us know if you do it at the end of the day. And there is certification as well, AZ220. Um, it's available for you. This is a part of it. Go have a look at it. Might be something you might be interested in. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for listening to me today. I hope you got something out of this session. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>